Good morning, my good friends. Just got back from a conference with top physicists talking about global warming and, and um, the ramifications. And uh, it was fabulous. I, I'm going to show you some of those clips. So anyway, here we are in this conference, and everybody's sort of staying apart and not thinking too much, not talking too much. So I, I'm trying to figure a way to get in with these people to talk to them, to talk to them about fusion, because I think I have a way to create fusion, or at least to look into it, and nobody will give me the time of day. So I'm thinking, how am I going to make an inroad to these people? So they're all, you know, of course, they're not religious people at all. So there's things in there that they were talking about. And I hear them saying this and that about religion and how they need to come out, you know, come into the new centuries and all this kind of silly stuff. And then what, what else was there? There was something else they mentioned. Um, oh, hold on a second. Oh, that's right. The next thing was they started talking about a lawyer. And all of a sudden I saw, oh, here's my inroad. So I... I just took control. I said, hey, did anybody hear the joke about the lawyer and the priest? And it sort of calmed down for a second. And, and I says, um, there's this lawyer who is representing this pedophile priest. And he goes in to meet with him. And he says, uh, you know, they're sitting out in this cafe talking and, you know, sort of quietly. And the priest seems to be preoccupied. And the lawyer says, listen, you better pay attention to me. You're in trouble here. And the priest said, well, I, 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 I got something on my mind here. And he said, well, what? And he says, the priest says, well, look over there. You see that little boy over there? And the, the lawyer looks over and he says, yeah, I see him. And the priest says, would you think less of me if I said I want to go over and screw him? <laughs> and the lawyer looks at him kind of puzzled. And he says, out of what? <laughs> and he went crazy. And then I saw another, I saw, I started telling a couple of jokes, and I'm now I'm getting in with them good. So they're, they're starting to talk, and everybody's starting to look over at us, like, because we're having a good time, everybody's laughing. And uh, I told them a couple of jokes about sharks and this and that, and, and, uh, and then I came up with a good one. Hold on, I can't, can't remember what it was, but it caught their attention. Um, all right, now I, can, I, I remember now. So we're all talking and everything and I'm making jokes and everybody's laughing. I says, you all must have heard the latest knock-knock joke and everybody's looking at each other. No. And I saw it. What's the guy? I pointed at one person. I said, go ahead. Start it off. And the guy goes, knock-knock. I said, who's there? <laughs> and they all look at each other like, duh. And then it erupted into hysterical laughter because that's the joke, obviously. So one guy didn't get it. Two of them didn't get it, actually. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it, it went on. It was hilarious. So all of a sudden I see my inroad. I, I said, you know, we're here talking about this global warming. You know, this is pretty serious stuff. Anybody consider fusion? And he's, oh, fusion, no, that's, that's, that's out of question. I said, what do you mean it's out of question? I, he says, you need plasma, you need cold plasma. He says, it takes too much power to make the plasma. I said, have you ever considered a Venturi? And they look on each other, you know. No, 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 no. It's just impossible. There's no. You, you have to have a magnetic containment. You got to da 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 da, and then do tritium and tritium and zip and dip and dip and on and on. I said, wait a minute. Let me show you just a couple of pictures. Just take a look at it. If you don't like them, we'll just go on from there. So I pull out this little tablet and I start showing the pictures of the light. And I see all of a sudden they're starting to take an interest. And I said, that's red laser and all these little dots appear to be, you know, I don't want to make any declarations, but these people don't like that. So I said, they appear to be glowing particles in the air, possibly they're free electrons, which I would suspect would collect on you in a dry environment because you are, have a more propensity to accept the electrons and then they would discharge from you to ground as static. That's what I believe we're seeing here electrons in the air freely floating and allowed to be to leave where they are associated to now in the event that there was an attractive source now that is the light from a red laser and looking at it it looks like waves but no matter what direction you looked at it from you would see the same effect and this is as it stretches and as it stretches it literally is a bullet and the particle that creates this entire wave owns a very large region. So as it passes through here, it disrupts a very large region. But eventually, as it approaches the accelerator, it uh, 
it exposes itself and it becomes glowing because that is the nature as we can see concussed particles seem to glow that's what I see and then we have the acceleration here and then the plasma so here we have plasma created from a passive source there is no additional input to our it's a literal crusher now when we originally talked we've been sitting here talking for a while we originally talked if you could force all of this material into a plasma without excessive use of extra energy fusion might be possible now if you had this facing in to each other in 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 different inputs the crushing event would be in the center and I can't see how it could possibly be any less effective than a magnetic containment and shooting lasers from every direction to push things in because we're accelerating those particles and not just having the laser itself that's just a laser which which um, I don't know maybe they have some way of making it do much more powerful things but I believe this is the, the, the way of making it do powerful things and when it comes out you can see coming out of the accelerator we end up with Higgs bosons we, are, we all know here at our physics conference what Higgs bosons are and these are the fields and we have created a reverse spinning particle here that shows up here and is creating its own unknown particle we actually believe we have seen the particles themselves as they slow down so now I got them they're really flocking around and I said even we've seen the right hand spin which means it will drift to the left and, oh this is fabulous oh this is great they're looking they're just going insane and they all start grabbing napkins and writing this and that and drawing little wily e. coyote diagrams in every different direction and then all of a sudden Oh, they were thrilled. They were going. They were, they were going to fix global warming. We got it now. We're going to create fusion. We're going to have global warming. We got a passive plasmatizer. Oh, they were coming up with all kinds of names. And then all of a sudden, this happened. So everything is going fabulously. I'm showing them the white particle that was spinning in reverse, coming out of the accelerator, and of course the Bose and the Higgs. You know, boson particles and the Higgs and this is a reverse spinning particle alright so now we're getting along fabulously but that was only for another few seconds I showed them this and the reverse spinning particle here the white one and of course the Higgs bosons the boson fields and then I showed them the particle that is new that we don't understand and I'm sure no one does that white particle hit one of the regular fields this is a reverse spinning it's supposed to spin to the right that one was spinning to the left gathering its field that's my was my statement to these people that I thought this and then all of a sudden they said whoa, whoa, whoa who is this guy and I said this is an unknown particle so next thing I hear is whoa uh, who are you affiliated with uh, how do you know this stuff and na 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 and your PhD and, and all so forth and I said no I'm not I just do the experiments and I understand what I'm doing here and I think I got something to help and then was, uh, one guy started out oh, who, what, what school are you affiliated, affiliated with and I said well um, MFU <laughs> the guy said I beg your pardon I said no 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 <laughs> Mud Fossil University and he said oh boy and then his their eyes started going up and he said we've heard about you and uh you're just out to destroy us. And I said, what do you mean I'm out to destroy? I'm not out to destroy anybody. I'm out to try to figure out how to fix things. I'm not out to destroy anything. I'm out to, to create truth and reality. I said, you see what I'm showing you here? All of a sudden, you guys are thrilled. We're going to be able to save the earth. I said, this, what you showed us is nonsense. And I said, wait a minute, two minutes ago, it was, it was you're going to save the earth. you got more napkins with drawings on here than I've ever seen on in textbooks and, it, and they started wrinkling them all up and throwing them away and I said you people just don't you think because I understand the other things of our reality and I've been putting them out there in and not hiding from it 
that you should disregard this that might help us to create fusion to save the earth you're going to walk away from that because you don't like my ideas about mud fossils and about our past and about Christ and about God and oh when I said that it was all over and they escorted me out <laughs> so it was fun while it lasted Okay, that's just a little bit of a theatrical performance about what would happen in reality. So, let, I'm going to just finish it up now, but it, I, I think it's time that there should be some way to approach academia with valid things. That they, they should have an obligation to look at this. Someone should be obligated to advance education if it's presented to them they, ha they should not be able to just walk away from it I think that's a fiduciary failure I would think that's a legal obligation to the students that are paying them to present them with information that's valid if, if someone comes to them with solid information especially my mud fossil information DNA and specimens and CAT scans and all that stuff and Yale University Derek Briggs down there Yale he absolutely refuses to see it and and this is the kind of attitude I get from every single universe it's not just them it was everyone so I think it's time we make a little change okay I'm gonna leave it at this again if these were heavy particles coming in, the deuterium and, and tritium, or if they were in the center being bombarded by something, creating this plasma crusher effect, but through the venturi, not in magnetic containment specific, specifically. And from many different directions, and creating a central core of plasma from which you would extract the electrons, the electricity, heat, however you're going to extract it out of there. I'm not sure what the method would be, but if you had free crushing, which is all you're doing with a magnetic crushing device, those are containment vessels and so forth, but they're expending enormous amounts of energy. This is a mechanical crusher. It's like a pair of, it's like a vice. <laughs> and it just works all by itself. You force them into each other and they will crush and they will plasmatize. I believe, could be wrong, certainly demands a little bit of a look. <laughs>